confirmed to devastate the country in this month. The SEC and the U.S. shedding light this week on dark polls, taking steps to make information about certain trades more available to the public. Jason went hunting with a Coleman flashlight and hopefully yielded a little <laughs> bit of light on this issue. Jay. Some light on the dark pools. Well, you know, here in Asia, firms are just beginning to discover the benefits of trading on dark pools. And now they're hearing that the United States is considering clamping down on them and making them more transparent, which kind of defeats the purpose. The name dark pools sounds like something out of a science fiction movie. But in stock market talk, it refers to an alternative trading system where you can buy and sell equities anonymously. You can trade huge blocks of stock in a single transaction without disrupting prices on the public market. By using a dark pool for the benefit of our underlying investors, we can cross large blocks of money, large blocks of stocks with other market participants at mid-market prices. Richard Colstock is head of dealing in Prudential's Singapore office. Usage and demand for them is increasing. We're in a slightly contradictory situation for their new entrance to the Asian markets, people are taking them on board and using them more. But then in the US, you've got proposed legislation that might restrict how much you can use dark pools. Colstock uses LiquidNet, a New York based dark pool broker with four offices in Asia. The company reports that in the last 12 months, their membership in this region has gone up 50%. Its average trade size in Asian securities is around a million dollars. But Asia overall has been slow to adopt alternative trading venues. LiquidNet, in a statement to Bloomberg, explained why. The lack of a single market structure across multiple jurisdictions is clearly lacking in Asia and has delayed the industry's development. Singapore's exchange, the smallest in the Asia Pacific, hopes to address that. In partnership with ChaiX, it's creating its own dark pool platform. It'll allow trades in large blocks of Singapore, Hong Kong, Australia, and Japan listed stocks. The U.S. may realize that it is not in their advantage to unilaterally impose that type of regulations um, you know, until they actually speak to all the sort of major jurisdictions and make sure that everyone do roughly the same thing at the same time. While the U.S. considers dark pool regulation, Asia's witnessing their proliferation. Dark pools do have their supporters besides the people who are using them. Dark pools provide liquidity in the market, which they say is beneficial. The concern is, especially in today's climate, that there exists the real risk that unscrupulous individuals, unscrupulous individuals might try to game the market. Bernie. Okay, and they're talking about cracking down on like 95% of the uh, dark pool allotment, 5% uh, of a company's stock, uh, just to use the simplest example, is allowed to trade on these uh, off-market platforms, and they're talking about cutting that to 0.25, which would basically uh, really brighten things up, if you would, on the horizon a bit. Thanks a lot for that. JB, Jason Bellini on that story.